Now that we were back into the swing of cruising life, we continued our way west to the island of Huahine. Little did we know, Huahine had a surprise for us that we hadn't expected. So where are we? Hey. We, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> where'd you come from? <laughs> we are in... Oh man, you're catching me off guard, all these island names. We are... What is the name of this island? Wahine. <laughs> we're in Wahine. And... I know we're east of Bora Bora and north of Morea. And we are in the southwest corner of it. We found this little anchorages where there's uh, really, really beautiful clear water. There's a lot of charter boats and a little hotel here. So the water's beautiful, the weather's beautiful, and uh, what are you doing? On the internet. So the water... We are in total lazy mode. We have been in the southern anchorage at Wahine for seven days now and have not moved. When we finally pried ourselves away from the internet, we headed to shore to get a better lay of the land. But before we could make it too far, we met a man that may or may not be the richest man in French Polynesia. For the next 20 minutes, he gave us his life story and told us, with pride, of all he had accomplished in the past 65 odd years. After joining the army at 18, he married a woman 22 years his senior, and after her passing, he inherited her retirement. At the same time, he also retired from the army and received his pension. Not long after, he decided to work for the government as a guardian of the island, welcoming guests as they made landfall, though of us there were few, and generally making sure no funny business goes on in his neck of the woods. At the same time, he went into business with his nephew, exporting coconuts, which, according to him, grosses 280,000 euros a month. A month. Plus, he purchased two homes which he rents out for 5,000 euros for government employees. We weren't entirely sure if this guy was pulling our leg, but he seemed pretty serious about the weight of his wallet. Yeah. Monsieur, tu es le roi de la Polynesie? Non, il y en a beaucoup ici. Ici, Yuan et lui, il est riche. Lui, le bateau là. We asked him what he was going to do with all of his money, and of course, there was a story to go with that. A story that involved an 18 year old pot smoking ex girlfriend who he financed through four years of college and an older French woman that had many travel plans for him. Elle avait 18 ans. 18 ans? Ouais. Comme toi. Ouais. Et moi, 40 ans. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> C'est l'argent. Oui. Je suis resté 4 ans avec elle. She smoked cannabis but didn't finish? No, no. 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 cannabis. Ah oui. Ma copine est une des cannabis. Et elle n'a fini pas l'école. Mmh. Yeah. Cannabis, euh, alcool. J'ai rencontré une femme, ça fait pas longtemps. Elle avait 68 ans. Oui. Ça, ça change pour toi, hein? Ah euh, oui. Non, elle est riche. 
fait quoi Elle est riche aussi. Mais le problème, il faut que je retourne en France. Je descends en France, après aller à Hawaï, mais allons à Italie, tout ça. Après, en Italie, il y a une femme, elle est compliquée la femme. Oh là là. Mais tu veux vraiment partir d'ici Non, non, va. After the full life story, we took a quick tour of his office and finally got around to getting directions for our hike. And there is our map for our morning hike. Are you feeling confident about that? Oh. Once we realized just how spectacular the island was, we really felt guilty about wasting a week in paradise. We had some making up to do. Uh, went for a little sail, got away from the boat, which is behind that corner. Sailed all the way out to the coral reef, all the way out there. And there's a cool surf break that I didn't know about. There's about six, seven people surfing it. Looks like uh, maybe that'll be a fun thing to do tomorrow. But uh, just a little fun views. Thought I'd share. You know, it's it's pretty easy to get stuck in the boat for four or five days doing boat projects and just snorkeling around. But sometimes you got to remember the reason we came to the South Pacific is for the culture and seeing the people and seeing something totally different. And the best way to do that is to just go out for a run. Just ran, I'm not a big runner, just ran two miles. And uh, I guess that means I gotta run two miles back now. But with views like these, it's, it's really hard not to run. The only other time that I've consistently run my life was when I lived right by the Golden Gate Bridge. I mean, you run along the Marina Green, how could you not do that? But uh, this is a great way to wave hello to people, see how they live, and uh, get to see where, where we're cruising, you know, real up close, and cover a lot of ground. So, running is good. Yeah, I like it. <laughs>
How you doing? Look at me!